today I want to keep this very simple and I just want to go over the basics of purge welding for the guys at home that don't know much about it, um, I've always wanted to give it a go and not quite sure where to start. Those of you that know a lot about purge welding, um, this is probably not going to be much help to you because I'm just going to touch on the very basic simple things to, and not try not to overcomplicate it for you guys. So purge welding, you're purging the oxygen out of the inside of the tube and filling it with argon. Now this means that when you weld, if it's got oxygen in there, it's going to oxidise, it's going to go all black, it's going to get little cauliflowers. Um, this sucks because one, when you go to weld, it'll drag the oxidisation back out through the weld. So you, you might think you've got a nice, colourful, shiny weld on the outside, then when you start to weld again, it goes all black. It's because you're dragging some of the oxidisation out through with you. Um, so the idea of purging all the oxygen out with argon is so that on the inside you get a nice, smooth finish as if it looks like what's on the outside here. Now, one little tip for getting going on purging, argon is heavier than oxygen, so always purge at the lowest point and then purge out, obviously, at the highest point. Now, I use the same size hose going in as I going out, so it keeps the flow the same. Um, on a spool this size, I'd probably run eight liters a minute. How having more pressure and less pressure can affect your purge weld is that the less pressure you have, um, sometimes you have to add wire to build that weld up nice to make it look like it's pushed out. Otherwise, if you're not so worried about eating argon, you can actually just turn the purge pressure up to like 12, and you'll find it'll, if you've got your heat and your travel speed right, you'll get a nice little bulge weld. Um, so yeah, the idea of purge welding stainless is so that it doesn't oxidize on the inside, it doesn't go black, and is a lot stronger. So you hear over the years, oh, my stainless exhaust crack, my stainless heaters crack. Um, Stainless gets a bit of a bad rep with exhausts for cracking, which I believe is due to people not welding it properly. Um, you get a lot of these guys and girls that go about welding it with no purge in it. Um, they do a nice little fuse weld around it and then obviously it cracks and breaks off and people go, oh, stainless sucks. Um, it's not usually the case. On the inside, if you don't purge weld um, your tube, and especially if you're not getting penetration, the oxidization on the inside can create it to start to either rust out or the crack can start internally and it cracks its way out and causes it to break. So a lot of the time, cracked stainless weld on exhaust are just because they haven't been purged or no one's added wire or that kind of thing. Now for knowing when your purge is right and it's good to weld, I'd recommend buying a purge monitor. I actually don't have mine on me, it's on a site job at the moment. Um, but what you do with these is they're just a O2 sensor, you put them on the end and it will tell you once the oxygen's all purged out. Um, I know a lot of you guys at home, you're not going to buy one of those, they're quite expensive. So a good rule of thumb is that if I had a piece, say, like this, I'd just give it three minutes. Um, if it's twice the size of this, give it five minutes. Just give it a fair amount of time to purge up and it'll nine out of ten times be alright for what you guys are doing at home. Obviously if you are doing sanitary work, um, food process piping work, make sure you use a purge monitor and make sure it's at zero zero. Now, um, I know a lot of you guys, you purge weld it and it still comes up colourful on the inside and you ask yourself why. Um, the reason for this is one, you haven't let it purge long enough at the start um, and two, once you finish welding, the first thing you do is quickly pull out the bung and have a look. Don't do this, um, just like when you're welding stainless and you let your TIG torch cooled, um, you let your weld ramp down, let the post purge have time to post purge exactly that. So leave it going for like a minute, 30 seconds and you'll find when you then pull the bung out, it should be a nice silver first colourful. Um, another reason another reason it can be colourful on the inside is that you haven't allowed it to purge long enough, so there's still a bit of oxygen in there, but obviously, say for example, there might be 90% argon, 10% oxygen, it will still purge, but it will come up colourful on the inside. So that might be also why you're not getting those nice white welds. Now, another thing that people do is they plug their purge hose on and then they crank the gas bottle right up um, in a litres a minute. Quick, obviously the more argon I put in the quicker it's going to purge, not necessarily the case. Um, for example, if you put a purge into this and just crank it full bore, 15 litres a minute, thinking it's going to act like a hose filling up water, push that um, oxygen out quicker, it won't necessarily happen. Sometimes it creates turbulence inside, and because you've created a turbulence inside, the oxygen's spinning and mixing around and it's going to take three to four times as long to purge it out. So, I'd recommend no more than six to eight litres a minute just while you're purging it and just be a bit patient. So that's as to why you get colours on the inside. Other benefits to purge welding is that you'll get a nicer weld. You'll find that the weld pull will flow a lot nicer. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you're not pulling out contaminants and 
it's just it should be it should just be how guys do it but i do understand that not everything needs to be purged so i've got this spool ready um i did a weld earlier in my previous video but say for example i want to do this weld here and i was going to set up for purging put my purge bugs in plug my hose in i'd head over and turn my purge on to eight liters a minute now i'm quite impatient when it comes to purging and like i mentioned earlier argan is heavier than oxygen so So if you turn your pipe up like this, it's going to fill up quicker and push all the oxygen in there a lot quicker than it will purging up this way. So you imagine when water's filling up this way, it's lengthways, it's slowly filling up with um, argon and then it gets to the top and it's going to squeeze the oxygen out and then that last bit will purge quite quick. By turning it on its side, the whole thing's going to purge pretty quick. So when I'm doing exhaust systems, I'll usually put a purge in it and then I'll just stand it on its end, lean it up against the bench because usually they're quite long and big um, and that helps to speed up the purge process. Another little trick, even if your fitment is perfect, what we always do in the food and beverage and pharmaceutical industry with purge welding and stainless tube is we tape up all the joints that we're not welding. So for example, if I hadn't welded this one here and I was, about, um, and I was going to weld these two, what I would do is tape up this weld here. But what can happen is that while this is purging, it can actually draw oxygen inside through the little gaps here if you were to have gaps. Um, and it's just it's just something that you do just to safe proof yourself um, to make sure shit no oxygen gets back in there because especially in the food and beverage industry, um, there's no lenience for colour on the inside, it has to be perfect. So it's kind of like a fail proof um, thing. So even when I'm doing exhaust systems, I'll go through, tape up all my wells that I haven't done. Um, that way too, I know some of you guys, if the fit-up's not the best, there's a little bit of gap that will create, you'll lose purge pressure or the opposite could draw argon in. Um, a good idea, use red tape. It's a lot easier to see. You won't miss the welds that you haven't done. So I highly recommend, yeah, go along, tape all your welds that you haven't, um, tape all your fit-ups up and then as you're welding, do one weld, go to the next one, peel the tape off. If you're doing a long exhaust spool and you've got 15 welds across it and you haven't taped up any of the um, butt welds before you weld them, you'll find that your purge pressure will grow as you do your weld. So as you seal them up, the purge pressure, say for example you're putting 8 litres a minute in, it might only be coming out here at 3, 4 litres a minute because it's all leaking out all the seams. And by the time you get to the end, the pressure will go back up to 8 and if you had that pressure too high originally, you'll blow your weld out. So that's a few basics on purge welding. It's not too complicated. Um, I know a lot of you exhaust guys don't do it, don't believe in it, that's okay. This is just for those of you that want to know the basics on it without getting too overcomplicated about it. Um, it's not as scary as you think. The, the key things to remember is that argon is heavier than oxygen. Always purge in the bottom, out the top, and give it enough time to purge at the start, and give it enough time to post-purge. And good little trick if you want to feel like the flow is going good and you can't quite feel it with your hand, lick your nail, stick that over there, or just lick your lips and put them over there. And if you can feel a nice gentle breeze coming, um, 9 out of 10 times you'll be right. But if you guys want to get real into it and want to know a whole lot more about it, flip me a private message and I'll be happy to help out. But like I said, it's just for those of you at home who know nothing about purge welding and have always wondered, oh, I wonder why guys purge weld. So that is that. Thanks. All right, so now that we've talked about it, let's do a weld, eh? I'm going to um, quickly walk the cuff around this and then we'll cut it open, we'll have a look and we'll show you what a nice purge weld on the inside should look like. I'm not going to use wire for this, I have the purge pressure turned up at like 10 or 12 um, so it'll be enough just to push it out. Obviously these three things you need to get right, you need a perfect walking weld, you need the temperature right, you need your travel speed right and you need your purge right. If it's too hot and you've got too much purge you'll blow your weld out. If you're too slow and not enough purge you won't get penetration so um, that's what I've seen you guys, if you want to know a bit more in depth about how to get it, we can make a video on that, but for now I'm just going to weld it up. Um, so there's a quick little time lapse on me welding that. While it's doing its post purge, which I told you guys about, letting itself cool down. Um, if I was pull it out now, it would go colourful, so we'll leave it to go white. 
Um, <laughs> might be hard to see in the time lapse, but gets the best of us. I was went to do the second side and the torch come loose and so I slipped off, um, which then created it to oxidise and go black. I'll show you a quick little clip of it soon. Um, obviously I just welded it back over and carried on for video purposes, but however that's not what you want to happen. Um, it should still be right on the inside because it's purged, but obviously with slipping and pulling the torch away it creates that hot red pool to oxidise um, and it's never nice to start welding on that again. A couple of tips for the purge welding. Um, to get the purge, to get the penetration, if you start and you don't have the penetration and you start walking or start welding, you probably won't get the penetration. Make sure you hang around, I don't know, one second longer than you think you need to at the start because once you've got that penetration going and got the swirling going, you'll carry those swirls the whole way and carry the penetration the whole way around the world. Where if you don't have it from the start, it's not just going to magically start um, penetrating and purging halfway around. So hang around a little bit longer than you think you need to at the start. Um, and another good tip trick is on your stop starts, so I welded that side first and then when I started on the underside, I started about 10 mil back on the uh, what's originally welded and then weld that and around and then that way you don't run the risk of missing an edge on your stop start. However, the torch coming loose and slipping off, I did not expect. Um, so, gets us all. So we'll quickly whip over the bandsaw, we'll cut this up and we'll have a look at it. So you can see here, I've got a nice little walk around the tube and then this little black dot at the bottom here is where it's oxidized, where I slipped off when the torch come loose. So that's what you want to try and avoid. So here we have a nice penetrated purge weld. Obviously the little splatters and what looks like oil is just the cutting fluid from the bandsaw. You can see too the little overlap from the stop start that I talk about in the video earlier. In this photo, I have done the purge weld using filler wire. So you can see that the root run has been pushed through a little bit more, but at the same time is nicely purged on the inside. So that's the difference between a weld with no wire and a purge weld using wire. Anyway, so that's how your weld should look on the inside, um, nice and clean. Mine looks like it's got a bit of oil residue in there. That was from the cutting fluid on the bandsaw. I tried turning it off so it wouldn't affect it too much, but um, you can only do what you can do. It's a good idea to wipe your tube down with meth to start with, or even um, give a little scotch bite on the inside. Obviously, here at SS Customs, we do sell full purge kits. Um, 1.5 up to 4 inch, it's just something that we over the years, I've used my experience to design and make these kits um, to suit all kind of, I guess you could say, applications. Um, these trays are real good. They fit into your standard toolboxes. They're only about, oh, I can't remember what it is, about 40 mil high. So they fit in the drawers. Otherwise you have a bench display there that you can purchase. What's real cool and unique about these purge bones is that they come with a stainless steel insert. Now these stainless inserts, you just push in, and then a hose is supplied with the purge kits that plugs into the back of it or as you can see on this one it's a quick release so you can plug it in it holds and then when you want you just push the little blue tab in and pull the hose back out now what's even more unique about these is that if you don't want to use the inserts for whatever reason the hole down the middle of the purge bungs is a 12 mil um, OD, so it's the same size as your standard argon hose that comes with all your welders and all that kind of gear, so you can just push it up the inside and you're good to go. So I'll drop a link um, below here so that you guys can get a hold of some purge kits if you want. They are designed to handle enormous amounts of heat. Um, you would have seen a little video floating around where I light one on fire just to show um, what they can withstand. Now, if you're using an orbital welder, you could pretty much stick a purge bung in there and do that weld, and it won't melt the purge bung. If you're welding it by hand, I recommend um, 15 mil away from the purge bung, and you'll be fine. Now, this varies for everyone because if you're someone that puts a lot of heat into your tube, obviously, compared to myself, where I have the travel speed and the heat quite right, um, you'll probably end up getting them a little bit hotter than I would. However, they don't melt, so um, that's the main thing. If you obviously, if you weld right on top of them course they're going to um, burn and it's going to ruin your weld so make sure that you're not welding on top of them and at least give 10 to 15 mils so um, put those on our website and they actually uh, are real durable and they're kind of cool they almost act like a little bouncy but they're really bouncy 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, cheers guys.